Mm-hmm. You guys hear me okay? Just testing my uh, my mic. Perfect. Thank you, Alan. Appreciate it. Brian. Brian, what's up, man? Oh, your, your audio is connecting. Can you hear me, Brian? Hey, how you doing? I'm doing good, man. How you How you been? I'm good. Been good. Are, are you in Guam still? Yeah, yeah. We just uh, they took me off the ship to start quarantine. So. Wow. Yeah. So be here for a couple of weeks, but you know, be able to be on here at least. Wow. Wow. Okay. Well, shoot, man. Good to see you. It's been it's been forever. It has. How you guys doing? Everyone's cool. Everyone's uh, healthy. Everyone's safe. So um, we're out here just uh, you know doing our thing, just just grinding away. So. Yeah. yeah, man, I'm, I'm glad to hear every, uh, all your friends on the ship. Okay, everyone's safe. Yeah, for the most part. Yeah, yeah, everyone's doing well. Cool, cool, awesome. Well, good to see you. Uh, thanks for joining. Um, all right, <clears throat> it goes April. Uh, we'll wait on a couple more people. Uh, thanks for everyone who who who's making it out today. So. What's up, Jason, Pete, Benny, hey everyone, April, Tony, good to see you guys. We got a hi, Brian, in the chat. Cool. We got Adrian on board. All right, awesome. So today um, we have planned to talk about social media, how to use it, uh, more so about marketing right so we're going to talk about um just marketing right now with covid um you could tell uh derek yes uh please so so <clears throat> hey what's up lucy anna everyone thanks for joining so uh today's topic of conversation uh was marketing during covid um not just social media, but just marketing, what it means, how to really uh, market to the people that you need to market to in order to get more business in this marketplace right now, because it's, it's changing, right? So technology is changing, everything's changing. So we had Derek Evans, uh, who a lot of you guys know uh, from Smarter San Diego. And, you know, Derek is, you know, really has his pulse on what's going on with, with all that marketing stuff. You know, he built his YouTube to I think six or 7,000 people. Uh, to this day, he's actually getting business from his YouTube channel that he built over the last several years. Um, with that being said, uh, we had a mix up on time with Derek. So he showed up at one o'clock instead of two o'clock and he had already two o'clock. So he might jump in in a bit if he's finished with his two o'clock. But what I wanted to, go over, I'm not gonna go over and touch his topic because I think he's really good at that um, as far as the, the, the marketing in today's uh, COVID environment through social media. Um, so what I'm gonna uh, go over is something that's uh, extremely important right now, which, you know, there's a lot of us in the real estate business that's kind of just, you know, uh, taking a break from real estate and we're losing a lot of any traction that we had leading up from the beginning of the year. Uh, we're potentially losing that traction. We're losing um, our, our, our pipeline. Whenever this thing goes back to normal and, and buyers go out there and start buying and sellers start selling, our pipeline isn't going to be exactly where we want it to be. So what do we have to do? Well, <clears throat> we have to continue in a different way now, continue to uh, work on our business and, and build our pipeline. Uh, as many of you know, uh, we lost a total of 10 different escrows when COVID happened um, that were in escrow, active escrows. And then we lost about 15 active clients, buyers that were looking for homes and then sellers that were looking to sell. So we lost 15 active clients, 10 
uh, active escrow. So it was a lot of business that we lost. And then more importantly, our pipeline that was growing, it just stopped. And it was super, uh, right now it's like, we're trying to build our pipeline and, and, it, and it's not easy, right? It's not like uh, any other April over the last 10 years where you started your build your pipeline, you know, buyers buying, sellers selling. So how do we counter that? Well, we counter that through having a really good uh, calendar and routine. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do a, a workshop that I've done before uh, a couple of years back that's going to teach us exactly some principles that we could all um, uh, use, especially right now in today's marketplace. And if Derek Evans finishes his meeting earlier, then we could have him jump on and just teach us a few things about marketing. If not, we'll just have him on another time. So uh, just in case some of you guys didn't hear that, Eric, uh, Derek Evans is going to be coming talking about marketing most likely. So I'm just going to go ahead and um, we're going to get right into calendar mastery okay which is super important so um this workshop i named it the perfect real estate day calendar mastery and how to work less and get big time results so this was in 2017 but now it's 2020 so i'm just going to improvise a little bit so this is one of my all-time favorite quotes um, i'm not necessarily a mike ferry guy i've never attended any of his workshops or seminars uh, i know his work but this quote says it all. My schedule is more important than any prospect, customer, problem, or appointments that I have. So I think in the real estate industry, a lot of us, you know, we have a time set to prospect or to do different things. And then all of a sudden, the buyer calls us and says, hey, I want to go look at a house. And we just immediately run over there and show that house. Or even worse, one of our colleagues or friends says, hey, let's go have lunch. And then you just immediately abandon all your... Um, your plans and your calendar to, to prospect and do things and you just go have lunch or you get distracted easy. Um, so the quote again, my schedule is more important than any prospect customer problem or appointments that I have. I mean, we really have to take that to heart. So if you set yourself a calendar to do something, we have to do it. And then that goes in personal life too. If you set a calendar to, you know, work out every morning, you know, at seven o'clock, take a jog. And then all of a sudden, you know, 7 a.m. in the morning hits and, you know, the fat person inside of you comes out and you start convincing yourself not to, ah, you know what, it's kind of cold outside, it's kind of chilly, maybe I shouldn't go for that jog. Um, you have to just remember that, again, you, you set that, uh, that schedule for yourself for a reason, right? You're probably out of weight. <clears throat> I mean, uh, you're probably overweight, out of shape, and, and same thing goes with our business, our real estate business. So, the first one, A, work that equals production. So what kind of work is there? So there's two types of work. Work that equals production and then work that doesn't equal production. So prospecting equals production. Following up with leads equals production. Negotiating contracts equals production. Implementing marketing campaigns. Negotiating repairs and then sales presentation, meeting a client for the first time. So these things equal production. What doesn't equal production? That way, um, uh, you know, and, and I've had this issue too throughout my career, just like a lot of us have is we tend to do the things that are easy. So for example, maybe broker caravan, writing contracts, drafting flyers, talking to other agents, checking email, checking Facebook, picking up coffee, surfing the internet, showing homes, um, working on the transaction, uh, like the TC work and picking up checks from escrow. I mean, who doesn't like picking up checks from escrow? I remember I used to love picking up escrow checks and then taking to my bank and then standing in line and depositing them and all that. Um, but that that isn't going to change your production. So what, what do we have to do? Well, this teaches us two things. It's like we have to prioritize the work that equals production or e equals dollars. And then we have to outsource the things that don't or stop doing them, like potentially checking our Facebook or um, checking our emails and talking to other agents and, and just surfing the internet. So that's two distinctions that we have to have right away. And that way we can set up our calendar the right way, okay? So, um, okay, somebody was asking me for a link to the, uh, to, to the workshop. All right. So um, 
si uh, a study of Fortune 500 CEOs revealed that the average CEO logs in about blank minutes a day for genuine productivity. So uh, Fortune 500, they, they did a survey and it was just amazing to find out that the average CEO logs in more uh, less than an hour a day of actual work, of actual productive work. Um, even though they're in the office eight to 10 hours, a lot of stuff that they were doing wasn't highly productive. So let's take a, a, a quick look at that survey. Well, I'll show it to you in a bit. Um, best ways to work is productivity intervals. So high intensity training of high performers. So it's almost like uh, people that are in sports, they do sprint and recovery sessions. So they sprint really hard, they, they hit a lot of reps, and then all of a sudden they, they rest and they recover, and then they do it again. Compared to people that just work out at the gym for several hours, um, half assing everything basically, and they don't have the re they don't get the results that they actually need to have. So what we call them is uh, power hours or airplane time. So those these are 45 minute intervals of highly focused work that um, produce big time results. So in in our work in in let's say for example our business. We call it just you know time blocking or power hours. We sit down and we actually bang out phone calls. Okay, uh, we prospect. We do some of this work that equals production. Now, why is it at 45 minutes? I've seen a lot of agents where they put like uh, they block off calendar time for two hours, three hours of prospecting. I could tell you right now, if you're blocking out your calendar for several hours at a time for prospecting, it's not going to get done. You might do it one day, but then the next day and, and the following weeks, you know, you just get, it's, it's too hard and people can't focus for longer than 45 minutes at a time. Some, some studies say 90 minutes at a time. So um, that's, you know, step one is finding out what type of work is there and prioritizing the, the, the productive work in 45 minute interval sessions at a time. So when I say 45 minutes, I'm talking about 45 minutes of prospecting, doing all that work, taking a break, 10, 15 minutes, doing some other type of work, and then coming back and doing another 45 minute session. So that's the uh, type of work that, that uh, I'm talking about. Um, the next one, oh, oh, by the way, this, this is another quote. I don't know whose it is, but Never mistake long work for hard work, AKA real work. So one thing with this is um, it, it's funny to me because a lot of people, a lot of agents um, or anyone in the business, they mistake long hours for real work or effective hours. And you know, when I was at a company, Century 21, um, a lot of us would just say, man, man, I was in the office all day and it was a long day, and, but it wasn't productive, if, if that makes sense. If anything, we might've prospected a little bit, which is the, the, the real work, but it wasn't productive. So just because you're in the office all day long doesn't mean that you're working. So the cool thing about being at home right now is that um, you, should, you should make yourself a little office space, wherever, whatever nook or, or corner you could find. <clears throat> And only go in there when you're ready to work. Productive, high interval uh, uh, sessions of 45 minutes at a time. Even if you get one 45 minute session in there, uh, that's way better than, than just sitting in your office just BSing all day because then all of a sudden mentally you get tired, physically you get tired because you feel like you're working but you're really not, that makes sense. So um, all we need really is one solid session uh, per day and it makes a ton of difference. And I and I'll actually, uh, I'll share with you at the end what type of difference it's made in, in my business over the last um, eight months. Okay. The next thing is procrastination. This is in our way. So we all procrastinate uh, some more than others. But I think the important part is knowing that we procrastinate and doing something about it. So reason of, of procrastination. Number one, we don't enjoy what we're doing. So if 
uh, most people say, hey, I hate making calls. So what do you do? You just procrastinate, 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 and you never get it done. Um, number two, we aren't good at what we're doing. So if you're brand new and you're making cold calls or you're door knocking or whatever, you're going to get rejected. And then we're going to become afraid of it. So what do you have to do? You have to get good at it, right? You have to uh, jump on training, um, you know, get scripts, rehearse them over and over and over again. Um, number three, the other reason why we procrastinate is it's above or below our pay, pay grade. So if we know that it's uh, below our pay grade and we're like, oh, well, I haven't done that because, you know, uh, it, it's below my pay grade, then find somebody to do it and hire them. And then that way they could do all the non-productive work and you could do all the productive work. Um, number four, afraid of playing big, being successful. So we all go through this uh, conversation in our head where we're talking uh, to ourselves and you know, we're like, man, I should go after this million dollar properties uh, or, or bigger client or a better area or whatever. But we're afraid of playing big or, or becoming successful because, again, you know, we're, we have a fear of, of uh, the unknown um, or sometimes of just being successful because with success comes a lot of responsibility. So right now it's like, okay, I'm chilling. I don't have to worry about much. So I just like this life. But once you start pushing yourself and you actually become successful, it, it is a lot of work. It's a lot more work. It's harder work. And it, it's, uh, you have to be more responsible. So a lot of times we're, we're fighting that. Okay. So we just have to know this again in, in our head. That way we know why we're procrastinating. We can fix it. Number five, the thing that you're procrastinating on really doesn't need to be done. So it's, it's, uh, and it's mentally bogging you down. So I have a, a actually a, a, a story about that. I have an accountability coach and for, for many, uh, I've had him for over 10 years where he would just hold me accountable to things. So on a weekly basis, on a Sunday, I would send him a list of things to hold me accountable to. So for sure, it was like every morning to wake up by a certain time. And then throughout the week, I would have certain things like prospecting hours or getting certain projects done. And if I didn't get it done, he would ding me a hundred bucks on my credit card. So um, long story short, there were some projects, I'm trying to remember what they were, but it was consistently, I wouldn't get them done that week. So I would just pay and pay and pay. And he said, hey, look it, is this really important to you? Like." Does it need to be done? And I thought about it and I was, I was like, you know what? No, I don't need to do that. Like, I don't even know why I committed to it. I don't wanna do it, I don't need to do it. And so a lot of times what happens is we commit to things that maybe we don't even wanna do. Maybe somebody else wants us to do or we, we feel you know we should do, but it's not something we wanna do. So if you have something like that, where it's like uh, you have it as your goal, and you're not getting it done, just know that mentally, it's weighing on you. And uh, it just messes with you so bad and it, 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 uh, it tires you out. So if you feel tired and you feel uh, like you're uh, burning out, just know that some of these things in your life you don't need, okay? You could just get rid of. Okay, so now, um, procrastination solutions for procrastination number one is make it fun right so um let's see here um so you could get a partner right making it fun like a partner so i'm sure a lot of people don't like going to gym don't like going on runs so what do they do they just get a partner hey like you know meet me at the park at seven o'clock we'll run the park that makes it a little bit more palatable uh, instead of just running right there by yourself um same thing goes with uh, real estate. I mean, throughout the years, I met a lot of people that, uh, let's say, agents that want to door knock. They just partner up with someone and they all go door knock together. Um, I have a buddy. He makes phone calls. Uh, he's really good at it. And what he does is that dude loves drinking. So he just sits with a bottle of whatever and he just drinks and makes phone calls. So that's his making it fun, right? Um, number two, get good at it. Right. So again, if you're good at something, you probably 
uh, you'll tend not to procrastinate because you're good at it. Compared to sucking at something, of course you're gonna procrastinate at it. Uh, number three, do it immediately. Uh, prospect first thing in the morning. So this is called eating the frog. So I'll exit this and I'll show you, uh, I'm sure you guys have heard me talk about eating the frog before. Uh, let's see here. So this is like a little story. Um, I forgot which which author. Oh, there you go. Yeah, um, Brian Tracy. You know, famous motivator or whatnot, a business guy. He talks the truth about eating a frog. So Mark Twain said that if the first thing you do each morning is to eat a live frog, you can go through the entire day with satisfaction knowing that that's probably going to be the worst thing that's going to happen to you all day long. So your frog is your biggest, most important task, the one that you're most likely to procrastinate if you don't do something about it. So if you have to eat two frogs, eat the ugliest one first. This is another way of saying that if you have two important tasks, you start with the biggest, hardest one first, and then um, discipline yourself to begin immediately, and then persist until the task is complete before you go on to something else. So in our real estate business, a lot of times like eating the frog could be prospecting. Eating the frog is calling uh, that seller for a price reduction, calling that buyer with a tough conversation like, hey, you're not realistic. We need to change your, your criteria. Instead of looking in Chula Vista, we need to start looking at Spring Valley and then, hey, if that doesn't work for you, sorry, we can't work together. So that, those are tough conversations that we need to have in our real estate practice. And it's, it's human nature to avoid those conversations. It's human nature to avoid prospecting. So if we get it done bright and early before noon, the, the scariest, ugliest frogs, then the rest of the day would be easy. Um, the other thing is, if you have to eat a li live frog at all, it doesn't pay to sit and look at it for very long. The key to reaching high levels of performance and productivity is to develop the lifelong habit of tackling your major tasks first thing each morning. You must develop the routine of eating your frog before you do anything else and without thinking too much time uh, to think about it. So that's the other thing. A lot of us, we just sit there and we're like, we just think about it. So guess what? If we procrastinate and it goes past one day or even that full day, all day we're thinking about that frog and it's eating at us. It's weighing us down. That's what makes us tired. So we come in each morning, we knock out the hardest thing, the hardest conversations that we're going to have, um, that client that wants to fire us, having that conversation with that person, um, the, the prospecting right first thing in the morning. The rest of the day, our mind will be clear. And again, we're going to go through the satisfaction of knowing that we did the dirtiest work right off the bat. Um, take action immediately. Successful, effective people are those who launch directly into their major task and then discipline themselves to work steadily and single-mindedly through those uh, tasks until they're complete. Failure to execute is one of the biggest problems in organizations today. Many people confuse activity with accomplishment. They talk continually, hold endless meetings, and make wonderful plans. But in the final analysis, no one does a job and gets the results required. That's important. Um, I think one time, um, I, I've, I've seen two titles of books that are just like mind blowing. One is Getting Things Done, right? So that's, that, that, that book, just the title alone, I mean, shows you how this affects everybody in America, not just realtors or whatever, but like how to get things done or something like that. Like, and, and really it's just like sitting down and, and doing it. Right. The other book was, um, it was funny cause my friend bought it and I thought he got scammed and it was called the uh, how to think. <laughs> so I, I remember seeing that title and I was like, dude, you bought a book called how to think, bro. Like you need to just walk into oncoming traffic, you know, but it was, it was, it was just funny to me because, Everyone in America has these issues and it's the people that actually just get past and just get it done are the people that are just be successful. You know, um, I had an agent I was talking to, I don't know if he was, if he's on this car or not, but 
you know, he was just telling me like, Hey, like what, what, you know, um, what do you think about, um, me and, in uh, you know, the industry that he's in, which is uh, commercial real estate, you know, and, and I, and I just tell him, Hey man, if you're doing eight hours a day and you're just kind of BSing and all that, I'm like, I'm like, whatever industry you're in, it's not going to work. But if you go in there and you hit it hard for eight hours or maybe 12 hours because you, you know, you have to, you know, bullshit for four hours then you'll be successful, but it's all about getting things done. Right. Um, so let's go back to the next thing. Um, develop a positive addiction. So you can actually develop a positive addiction uh, to endorphins and to, and to the feeling of enhanced clarity, confidence, and competence that they trigger. When you develop this addiction, you will, at an unconscious level, begin to organize your life in such a way that you're continually start and competing ever more important tasks and projects. You actually become addicted in a positive sense to success and contribution. So I think the biggest thing right here about becoming a, a, an addict to endorphins is just look at gym rats gym rats that just go to the gyms and lift weights and all that you know i look at them i'm like how the hell can you stay in the gym all day and just like really work out like that sucks you know but working uh, working now releases endorphins which, which you know um it's, it's like eating chocolate to other people or whatever so these good feelings through your brain that your body really likes so if you could develop a positive addiction to something like just, you know, crushing it for one hour every morning on your, on your prospecting calls. Um, shoot, you're going to just do it faster and do it better. Number, uh, the next thing, no shortcuts. Practice is the key to mastering any skill. Fortunately, your mind is like a muscle. It grows stronger and more capable with, uh, use with practice. You can learn in any behavior, or develop any habit that you consider either desirable or necessary. You know, a good example of that is um, um, there's a, uh, what, what's that name? Cla uh, Claudia, what's the name of that class that you go to on Saturdays? Toastmasters. So I think you guys were here where when Gabe Mendes came and he talked about social media marketing and, you know, you look at him and he talks well and, you know, he, he interacts with the camera well. Well, all that is practice since 2013. Toastmasters every Saturday morning, 8 a.m. Um, he got good at it. So now he really likes it, right? And a lot of us, you know, let's say we're on camera and we fumble over our words and we don't know exactly how to say things and deliver certain speeches. It's, it's, that's normal. That's natural. That's just with everybody. You know, if a lot of, you know, if I pick up a baseball bat and someone pitches the ball at me, I might, you know, strike out because I don't practice that every day. So it's all about practice and in real estate, uh, a lot of us, you know, we get our license and we just don't even ever consider practice. We're just like, okay, I'm just going to come out of here and try to sell homes and talk, you know, door knock and talk to people. Um, and when we go and we fail because we're not good at it, then, you know, we want to quit. So uh, there's no shortcuts. Right. And then the last thing here is action exercise. So, what is your fraud? What is the one task that you despise doing each day? Once you have chosen your frog, make it a habit to wake up every morning and do that task first. So imagine how powerful that could be if we all just pinpoint our frog and say, hey, look at every morning, I'm gonna do it. And let's not commit to a year long or a month long. Let's just say, hey, day to day, you know, Tomorrow morning, I'm going to wake up and I'm going to do this thing first. And then that way, the rest of the day, you're mentally free and you're not being bogged down. Okay. Um, this is a really good story. The big rocks of life. I'll come back to this. <clears throat> uh, let's see here. Let me go back here. All right. Solutions to procrastination, association front. So um, I think we were here. 
I can reasons for progression and solutions to it. So um, when you associate fun to the very, you know, to the ugly frog that you have to eat, um, you know, it could work out. So you either turn on the music to help you through your calls, maybe food while you're calling, uh, you know, just it, like people at the gym, you know, they're at the gym on the treadmill, but they're watching TV and they got their earphones in. Same, same concept, uh, drink. So this is my buddy who, gets drunk every night making phone calls, uh, party, maybe you could create a, 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 an event around it. So this is like people that do networking events, you know, they like to be at the bar, they like to be around people. So they just create an event around it and they, they network and they get clients because of it. Winning, bonus yourself with food, night, night outs and shoes, et cetera. So, you know, that one, it, it depends on, on you and your personality. You know, for, for years, I had my coach that would say, hey, Voltaire, you got to, these wins, you have to celebrate them. How are you celebrating these wins? And I'm just like, uh, okay, if I get this task done, or if I close this deal, or if I get a new client, whenever I do get a new client, I'm going to take myself out to a, a nice restaurant or the movies or whatever. So everyone here likes something different and something motivates you so if like let's say if, uh, for any of the ladies on here that love shoes and you're always consistently buying your, your, yourself shoes maybe change that habit and just say hey look it I love shoes but I'm not going to buy myself any shoes unless I prospect 60 minutes every day consistently for seven days or if I get whenever I get a new client I'm going to treat myself to a new pair of shoes so I think if you if you uh, give yourself if you give yourself the permission to celebrate your win, that definitely is a big plus, okay? So let's talk about distractions. So why do we even have this conversation about getting things done and how to get things done and creating a calendar? Well, it's because there's a lot of distractions around us and a lot of us choose these distractions over getting the work done. So uh, right here it says, A, distractions are time killers and productivity wasters. That's uh, very true. So in the 21st century, we don't experience 100 years of progress, but 20,000 years worth of progress. So this is from an author of uh, Law of Accelerating Return. So what he's saying is that every year in the... Uh, in the 21st century, we're experiencing 20,000 years uh, of progress um, just because of the internet and how everything's being speeded up. The second one is the CEO of Google. All the information ever created in humanity and human history up to 2003 is created every day. So let me read that again. All information ever created in human history up to the year 2003 is created every single day. And what he means by that is all the content that's being put out. Right now, there's so much content out there in the internet and in the world that we could consume. Those are all distractions. So if we're trying to work and we're on our phone and then we see distractions such as, you know, you got some, you know, new likes or new comments on your post or there's a new headline about coronavirus. Those are all distractions. And then we go into that, we leave the important work and then we go into the rabbit hole of that distraction of, uh, an article that leads into videos, that leads into more comments. So number three, obesity is not food overload. It's food overconsumption. Stress and distractions is not information overload. It's information overconsumption. So I think that's a, that's a good key to take away is there's a lot of people that are overweight, as an example, and and I know a lot of these people and they tell me, I don't know why I'm overweight. Like I hardly eat or I do this or I, you know, but it's like, there's only one way that you can be overweight and that's overconsumption of food. So when it comes to business, when it comes to real estate, um, a lot of us are like, man, you know what? I don't know what's wrong. I can't close any deals. I, I work for 10 hours a day. Well, the issue there is that you're not putting in the right type of work during those 10 hours a day, but most likely 
you're um, you're over consuming information, content from the internet, you know, uh, social media. You're just there consuming, over consuming. Just because there's so much information out there doesn't mean we have to consume it all. All right. So, for example, on my phone, um, I turn off all notifications on my phone. Uh, social media notifications, email notifications, um, and I've and I've done this now for several years where I don't have any of these notifications. What I have, uh, and I and I try to, I try to turn off my text notifications, but my phone doesn't allow me to do that. Uh, but I, I went to an extreme because I said, hey, look it, I know this is an issue, all this information overload, and I'm consuming all this information, and uh, I don't want to do that anymore. So I made it a point to, to do that. Now, with that being said, I know it's hurt me a little bit because sometimes I go into Facebook or whatever, and I have like messages that are days old. So I'm like, okay, you know what? I'm getting information from, uh, I mean, I'm getting leads from Facebook and social media or whatever. So I got, I got to check in with those a little bit more. Um, but in all in all, it's, it's really helped my business. Okay. So again, let me sh share this with you. We can't over consume all the information that's out there in the world. Number four, the more overwhelmed we are, the more we search for a convenient distraction. So again, if we if we having the feeling of uh overwhelm, then what we should just uh do is is uh stop uh looking for distractions. So we uh, we got to get rid of that. Uh the next thing, addictions. So there's four productivity crushing addictions. Number 1 is we want to be wanted we want validation. So what does that mean? Um, every email, text, Facebook response gives us a squirt of the love drug. And those are endorphins. Uh, so whenever we post on Facebook, Instagram, we're just looking for that. We're like, okay, when are the likes gonna start coming in, right? And we look through that and, and we're just, you know, and, and that's a one of the, Product, uh, for productivity crushing addictions. So let's look for exhibit two, see what that's talking about. Okay, cool. Um, so in here, it's just saying that the average 13 to 17 year old is exchanging um, several thousand messages while they're awake uh, a month. Um, I don't have this in here, but several people, a high percentage of people check their email while driving. Nowadays, it's, you know, they're checking their social media while driving. Um, several people out there check their email uh, while on vacation. Um, so all these are, are, are just productivity crushers. Um, there was uh, over 50% of people that said that they used their phone while on the toilet. I was actually on the phone with someone yesterday and he says, hey, yeah, you know what? Let me flush, let me wash my hands and then I'll get back to you. And uh, I was just like, holy shit. And at first I didn't touch, I was like, okay, yeah, yeah. And then I thought about him, like, hold up, what are you saying? And I was like, it was, it was crazy to me, right? Um, so again, we have to get rid uh, of these uh, productivity crushing addiction that, that we all have. Let me go back here. And I know Derek jumped on and, and Derek, I'm, I'm going over this workshop that I do. Um, I haven't done it in a while, but it's, it's actually pretty good, pretty good on uh, calendar mastery. So well, Derek, can I make a suggestion? Sure. You, you need to start getting some better friends for some <laughs> of these guys you talk to. You, you know, there's only one commonality in all this. It's you. It's me. That is right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, so, so yeah. So there's, there's all this stuff going on. Um, hold on a second. Give me one second here. Let me go back here. 
You're right, coach. I got, I do got to get better friends. Um, B, we can't please everyone. If we are, we aren't doing our job. If someone wants you to prioritize uh, them, don't. Um, so, so the thing is, it's like, we have to choose our priorities, right? We're not going to please everyone. We just have to, um, choose the important stuff and then, and then take it from there. Uh, the second productivity question addiction is what am I missing syndrome? The human need of belonging, uh, to be in the herd. So we don't need to know. There's a lot of things that we don't need to know. We don't need to know that Trump rallies are happening and people are fighting or Obama's farewell speech or the coronavirus, you know, what, what, what's happening is, you know, again, we go the day with checking our social media, checking um, the news feeds and all that stuff. And that's just really crushing our uh, productivity. Uh, again, B, turn off all alerts to the outside world. You know, only have one of those things that supports your goals. So only have the things on that support your goals. So, if, you know, you're in the loan business, maybe have the the interest rate feed, you know, come to your phone or whatever is happening, right? But not everything. Um, we don't need alerts to know that the Padres have the worst record in baseball. We can actually figure that one out without turning on the TV. So there's all these things that we could maybe turn on at the end of the day, but not throughout the day. Um, there's um, instant gratification. Uh, studies provide the most important human discipline to become successful. So the delay of instant gratification makes uh, us successful. And that's kind of like the marshmallow test. Do you guys remember the marshmallow test? I don't know if I have it here. No, I'm not gonna go find it. But basically the marshmallow test is they have these marshmallows in front of kids and they tell the kids, hey, look it, if you don't eat your marshmallow, I'll give you more later on. And the kids, and then they leave the room. And then the kids that nibble on the marshmallow, that touch the marshmallow, that eat the marshmallow, they follow them in life 20 years later and they found out that they weren't as successful as a kid who delayed satisfaction and grat instant gratification and didn't eat the marshmallow and waited for more mar marshmallows uh, later. So that says a lot, right? So we're able to delay the instant gratification of checking our Facebook, checking our Instagram, checking our email, uh, getting distracted, then we'll be more successful. Number three, busy being busy and accomplishing little, human need of desirability. I'm important, I'm significant. So I suffer from this one, right? Because I like that feeling of feeling important and significant whenever someone comes to me with an issue. So I jump on it, start taking care of it. Now, is it the best uh, use of my time? No, most of the time it isn't. And I think a lot of us suffer from that. So um, busy feels great and we're obsessed with it. Distractions offer us relief. So going back to this busy feels great, how many times have we been uh, in the conversation of uh, hey, how was your day? Oh my God, I was so busy. I was super busy all day. And it makes us feel important. It makes us feel desirable, right? Um, you really don't hear people say, ah, I wasn't busy. I wasn't doing nothing all day. I just, you know, wasted my entire day, right? Because it makes us feel like we're, we're not important. So that same addiction, it, 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 you know, it just really messes with us. And I would love to be able to say, hey, how was your day? And just say, you know what? It, it, I was busy for about a, an hour or two. And then the rest of the day, I just, I just didn't have nothing else going on. You know, that, that would be a, a great feeling. Um, so again, distractions offer us relief. And that's why we're, we, we easily, you know, welcome distractions. See, on average, we get distracted every three minutes. And it takes us 11 minutes to re regain concentration. 
40% of the time, we don't resume the task previously working on. So read this one again. On average, we get distracted three, every three minutes and it takes us 11 minutes to regain our concentration. And 40% of the time, we don't go back to the same thing. So I think we could all attest that that's true. We get distracted every three minutes and then it takes so much longer. I mean, um, there are several times, even last week, or that I could think of that I was just like, uh, what was I, what was I working on? I forgot. Um, because I lost concentration and it, and it, and it took me a while to, to gain that back. Um, I will change that Samantha to 2017 to 2020. Um, multitasking. Can we really multitask? Uh, so the human need behind multitasking is I am capable. I am worthy. I am important. When you multitask, it's inevitable that each individual task be slower and of lower quality. And just think about driving. I mean, we could all drive and, and let's say have a conversation with someone um, or be on our phone. <laughs> you know, unfortunately, some of us, not, not me, I know my mom's on this, but if, if you drive and you don't have the, the radio on, you don't have your phone, you're not having a conversation with nobody, you'd probably be a lot safer. You, 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 it's higher quality uh, work that you're doing or, or, or drive because you get there faster, safer. Um, so, it's, so it's really this multitasking, it's, it's not real. We, we really can't multitask. Um, we can't use the same part of our brain simultaneously. So intense multitasking can produce stress response and this can damage memory so we're always trying to multitask and do several things that could damage our memory it creates uh, increases the stress so the solution we have to go to war against distractions by working on our agenda and not somebody else's so if we have an agenda and somebody walks into your office you have to let them know hey look at um, i'm working on this i'm going to get uh either on your agenda down the road or not at all right so we have to go to war, literally, against distractions. Number four, eat that frog. You know, we talked about it. You know, Mark Twain said it. Uh, we got to eat that frog and then the big rocks of life. So I'll go into that one so we could all kind of uh, go over that story. But um, see here. I think we're here. All right. So this is Stephen Covey, first things first. One day this expert was speaking to a group of business students and to drive home a point, use an illustration I'm sure the students will never forget. After I share it with you, you'll never forget it either. As this man stood in front of the group of high powered overachievers, he said, okay, time for a quiz. Then he pulled out one gallon wide mouth mason jar and set it in front of the table in front of him. Then he produced about half fist size rocks and carefully placed them in one at a time into a jar. When the jar was filled to the top with no more rocks to fit inside, he asked, is this jar full? Everyone in the class said yes. Then he said, really? He reached under the table and pulled out a bucket of gravel, then dumped some gravel in and shook the jar, be, causing the piece of gravel to work themselves down into the spaces between the big rocks. He smiled and asked the group one more time, is the jar full? By this time, the class was on to him. Probably not, one of them answered. Good, he replied. And he reached under the table, brought out a bucket of sand. He started dumping the sand in and it went into the spaces left in between the rocks and the gravel. Once more, he asked the question, is jar full? No, the class shouted. Once again, he said, good. Then he grabbed a pitcher of water and he began to pour it into the jar until it was filled to the brim. Then he looked up in the class and he asked, uh, so what is the point of this illustration? One eager beaver raised his hand and said, the point is no matter how full your schedule is, if you really try hard, you can always fit in more things. No, the speaker replied, that's not the point. The truth of this illustration teaches us if you don't put the big rocks in first, you'll never get them in at all. So <laughs> that illustration is just crazy to me, right? Because uh, it's called putting in the big rocks first. What's the big rocks? Again, 
the most important thing that you have to get done in your day. Um, the prospecting. Um, and it's true. You know, we all fill, I think, our jar with water and, you know, sand first, all the easy stuff that's going to get done regardless. And since we're doing the easy stuff first, there's never going to be enough time for the, for the big rocks to go in the jar unfortunately. And if we run our business like that, our, our life, our family, or, you know, whatever you want to call it, it's, it's, uh, we're never going to accomplish great things, all these things that we set out to be, right? Because again, we're, 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 those small things that the, in his example, the water, the, the gravel, the sand, that's going to happen. The emails, they're going to get checked, you know, the, um, the inspections are going to get scheduled, you know, all these things that aren't the fundamental pieces of our business, they're going to happen regardless, but the prospecting, the hard stuff that, that, that isn't going to get done unless you actually make it a point to get it done. And that's, you know, eating the frog, doing the biggest things, right. You know, when you wake up in the morning. <clears throat> um, how to work less and accomplish more. Uh, set a goal for yourself once it's uh, or, or, or rules or a schedule once set don't break them choose your power hours for yourself Sunday night 45 minute blocks choose times to respond to people via email or phone calls by the way this choose a time to respond to people via v emails and phone calls I used to think it was like kind of cheesy I used to call real estate agents and I would hear their voicemail and they said Hi, you know, re you reached Ronnie and I will be returning your call today between 12 and 1 p.m. and 5 to 6 p.m. And if you call me after 6.30 p.m., I'm going to be with my family and I can't call you back. I used to think that was cheesy. But now, looking at it, it's like, dude, that dude was, dude, Ronnie was the smartest dude out there because he's prioritizing his time, um, even when to call people back. Um, choose how to handle people distracting uh you and your life you have to be up front so whoever's a distraction in your life and they're always you know taking time and, and asking to be on your on their schedule you have to be up front and just you know uh tell them hey look at i got this schedule for myself i gotta knock it out and and right now i can't deal with you so the next thing is you can list three things that you'll stop to tolerating people walking in and wanting to talk to me two me being distracted during my power hour sessions three Myself scheduling other items during my prospecting time. That's very easy to do is if you have your prospecting times and then something else, a distraction, and you choose it, that's the easiest thing. And I think uh, that haunts a lot of us. Things that we should do, create specific goals, create a calendar that will in turn produce those goals, um, calendar, personal time, and working time. Uh, number four, work hard, then take breaks, schedule it, recover. And then D, fill out your MVP for each, deal, for, each, for each day. So let's go over that really quick. Uh, here we go. Okay, so this is, you know, just a, a, a copy of a schedule. Um, I'll actually show you my schedule right here. Can you guys see this? Can you see it, Rose, the, the new schedule? Cool. All yes. right. So we can see it. Thank you. Um, so anything in green is prospecting time. So green, that's money. That's, you know, I'm, I'm prospecting. Um, everything else is, you know, uh, things that aren't going to be, you know, really putting money in my pocket. So I make sure now that everything in green is, is uh happen now the other thing is with doing your 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 calendar is um you want to try to get all your green stuff in as early as possible in the morning right um so you want to do that you know i didn't do a good job here wednesdays we've been doing prospecting at night anyways for as longest so that's already set um so you always want to just kind of just uh, make sure that you you have this calendar and you you could color coordinate. I know April's she has like five different colors on hers. Um, but with me, I just put, you know, prioritize everything in green, make sure it gets done. Okay. 
All right. Um, and by the way, before I used to have more prospecting hours. If you're newer, you should have several prospecting hours separated by breaks, you know, 45 minutes at a time, 60 minutes at a time. So you should have two to three per day. Okay, if you're a newer agent and you're looking for more business. All right, so here we are. Uh, let's see. The last. Uh... So these are some, some of the goals that you could do for yourself every day. So every day you could do your top three most valuable priorities time chunk to complete. So, you know, if you're gonna prospect, you could do, you know, 45 minutes or an hour 30, that way you know exactly what you're gonna do. Um, you know, uh, if it's, you know, eating a frog, talking to a client that's gonna fire you, 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 you need to set that aside as well. Um, so you wanna have those three MVPs for yourself every single day, okay? And the last thing I'll leave you with is this. My schedule is more important than any prospect, customer, problem, or appointment that I have. So if you set a schedule for yourself, follow through, right? Any empty space in your calendar, you could just put, you could dedicate it to prospect, I mean, to, to customers, problems, or, 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 or potential appointments that you may have, okay? so. That quote again, it's gold. Now, real quick, we still have Derek Evans on. I know we're, we're already at the hour, but uh, Derek, I was thinking maybe what we could do is we could reschedule our, our marketing call, but maybe you could tease everybody as to exactly what you're gonna talk about on uh, that marketing call. And then maybe, maybe we could set up a couple of Wednesdays from now. So uh, if you wanna uh, unmute yourself and just uh, tell, give, it, give us all like a sneak preview on exactly what we're gonna go over today. Sure, sure. Yeah. Uh, sorry about that. Uh, mix up on the times there. Um, but yeah, I can definitely oh, give good. you the, I can give you the first piece of it. Um, so what's up to everybody out there? Um, hope you guys are getting a lot from Voltaire's class here. What I'm going to do is just share my screen and I'll kind of show you. And, and, and Derek, uh, yeah. some of us know you, some of us don't, but just really quick, if you could just, uh, uh, I guess, tell us a little bit about your background and why um, you're one of, uh, somebody that they should listen to as far as, um, marketing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. All right. So I spent uh, a lot of time, uh, marketing, um, both in the media space. I own a studio in Sorrento Valley, uh, done tons of stuff on Facebook, YouTube. YouTube's actually been a, my biggest source of online business of all. That's a whole nother class. Um, and so working a lot as a lender, you know, I do, I focus on helping people who are VA buyers or, or VA refinancers, VA homeowners. Uh, so serving veterans is my focus in, in business. And what I like to do is always just share stuff when I find things that are working or uh, things that I think people can improve upon. I do consider myself a black belt in marketing. And uh, what I'll do here is I'll give you sort of uh, the preview. I'll give you the, what would be the first 10 minutes of this class, which a lot of times people after the first 10 minutes, I can see they're itching to run back to their computers and go make changes and do different things. So maybe this will work out perfectly. Um, so let's go ahead and do that. This was this class scheduled to be, you know, marketing with social media during lockdown, um, an insider's guide to help you understand how to do better marketing for your business and how to grow your following engagement and leading uh, generation online. And a lot of this stems around the concept of <clears throat> what is marketing. The biggest issue that is made by all business owners and entrepreneurs is that they don't quite understand what marketing actually is and how it works. So we'll break that down for you here in about 10, 15 minutes. So. The first thing you have to understand when we're doing marketing, and normally if I were doing this class in person, I would be asking you questions. I'd be saying, well, what is marketing? And I'd let someone answer. Um, no one gets it right because it's, it's something that you would only understand if you deeply studied this. But when, you're, when we're marketing, what we're actually doing is we're creating curiosity. A lot of people say, well, you're marketing, you're trying to get your business out there, you're doing outreach, um, you're sending people stuff, you're trying to get people interested in things. Not true. What we're actually doing when we're marketing is we're creating curiosity because there is a gap between someone who knows nothing or someone who is what we would call cold and someone who's interested. That gap, what bridges that gap is curiosity and the truth. But we have to start with curiosity. When someone, when you, think about when you respond to marketing, what does it look like? You become curious, you see something and go, huh, what is that? Interesting, I need to inquire, I have questions, 
right? That's what gets people to take a step is when they start, when they become curious. Um, with someone who's already interested, how long does it take them to find a realtor? If I want to sell my house today, I've already made that decision. How long before I find a realtor? 10 seconds, 10 minutes, not very long. So if you're aiming your marketing gun at that small of a window, then you've got to, you better be a sniper, um, you know, or you better be spending a ton of money so that you can catch people who are just so happen to fit into that exact window. Outside of that, usually what we're doing is we're, we're trying to reach out to people with our marketing who are in what we call the uh, decision period. You know, when someone decides to sell their home or when someone decides to buy a home for that matter, there's a period of time where they are in consideration, what we call the consideration period. We're thinking about buying, we're thinking about selling. Um, you know, people make those decisions sometimes a year or two years ahead of time, certainly months. Now, if it's a rare circumstance, someone gets a phone call, hey, we're getting PCS here or there, you know, they have to make the decision faster. But for most people, there's a long consideration period. Those are the people you need to target your message for because those are people that are easier to get to than the people who are just decided they're going to sell and they have 10 minutes to get in front of them. <laughs> that's such a small window. So if we understand that the concept here is creating curiosity, that's what marketing is designed to do because ultimately, you know, the, it's the bridge to interest in. I'll get to that in a second. So how do you create curiosity? And this is something that is important to take away immediately. Any of your marketing messaging needs to have the, the copy or the actual messaging itself is crucial. Um, you need to be speaking directly to that person. So let's just stick with home sellers for a second. So if I'm in the consideration period of selling my home, which means me and the wife, we've talked about it. I said, you know, maybe we should sell them. Maybe we should move closer to the beach. Maybe we should do this. Maybe we should do that. We're considering it. Maybe we've looked up to see what our house is worth online. Maybe we've been looking at homes on Redfin near the beach and we're kind of thinking we're in this consideration period. Now, if I own a home in Carmel Valley and I see a message on social media or in an email, wherever, it doesn't matter, print media, anywhere. And it says something along the lines that speaks directly to me, um, you know, three things you need to know before you sell your home in Carmel Valley or how to sell your home in Carmel Valley during the COVID crisis. I, no matter who you are, if I don't know you from anyone, because your messaging is so specific to my circumstance, I have to look at it. If I see a video like that, if I'm just scrolling through YouTube and I see that, I have to look at it. I have no choice because it's so specific. A non-real estate example, um, which is uh, one that I use frequently is when looking for riding lawnmower. I actually just said this. I wasn't looking for riding lawnmower. It started, they started, the ads started showing up, <laughs> super creepy. But that's how some of this marketing stuff works these days. So, but if I were actually looking for riding lawnmower and I saw this, this article that came up and said, how to choose the best riding lawnmower, I would have to look at that article because it's so specific to what I need. So we need to create curiosity and it's very important the messaging that we use needs to speak directly to those people who are in the consideration period, the consideration of buying or the consideration of selling. If we are make the messaging for that person, even if we don't know who that person is yet, we make the messaging for that person, they will have to look at it because it is so relevant to them. And remember, we're all very busy. We'll have lots of things going on. We have lots of places to go get content. So the messaging, in order for us to, to get to our attention, had better be really specific for us. So curiosity creation is the goal of marketing. You do that best through copy, the wording, the messaging, that's the key. The facts are what determine interest. A lot of times when I ask people about marketing, they say it's about getting people interested. Not true. We want to create curiosity with people. It's the facts that determine whether they're interested or not. So if we're promoting a property and someone reaches out, they're curious, right? They start asking questions. Does it, does it have a bedroom on the first floor? Um, does there a hot tub in the community pool area? They start asking the questions because they're curious. Now the facts will determine whether they're interested or not. The facts and our ability to sell, right? So the facts, hey, no, it doesn't have a hot tub, but there's a great club right across the street. Or yeah, they don't have a hot tub, but the pool is heated, it's very comfortable. You know, so the facts and our ability to sell will determine whether someone is interested or not. How much is the, would the payment be on this place if I didn't have any money down, whatever. It'll be this much. Oh, wow, that's less than I pay in rent. Now I'm interested. Or wow, that's $1,000 more than I pay in rent. I'm not interested. So facts determine interest, facts and saleability. Uh, but for as far as, you know, create, you know, getting response from marketing, it's about creating curiosity. So what is marketing then? It's, you know, the difference between, I'm going to talk about marketing and branding here because this is the big mistake that most people make. In order for it to be a marketing message, there has to be an offer. Okay, and this offer has to be qualified by these three um, pieces of information I'm going to give you here. 
if you are putting messaging out there, I don't care where it's on social media, in a mailer, it doesn't matter. And it does not have this, it is not marketing. So you have to have some kind of offer. Now the offer can be expertise, but it's gotta be very specific. It's gotta be super specific information if that's the case. I gave the example earlier, um, how to you know, sell your Carmel Valley home in the COVID crisis, or top three things you need to know before you sell your home in Carmel Valley during the COVID crisis. That's the kind of you know, messaging that you can use for expertise or information to be the offer, which is not, you know, not the easiest way to go about it, but that is one option, obviously. So uh, you, the offer has to be something of value. Um, we've seen, uh, I'm sure some of you have seen the um, billboards on the 805, at least I know I drive past one every day. Um, a very prominent real estate agent who spends a lot of money marketing has a billboard there. And it says, uh, you know, guaranteed sale in 30 days or we'll buy your home, something like that. Um, this is great marketing because what he's done is he has not only created a message that will, as you'll see, we'll check all the boxes here on our offer, but it also the messaging is designed for who? Someone who wants to sell their home quick. So that, that offer appeals to someone who wants to sell their home in the next 30 days. So regardless, of, he's not targeting that message. He's putting it on a billboard because he knows I can't aim that small. I've got to put this in front of everyone so that when someone does get that moment where they go, we need to sell our house fast. We think about the guy who said he can sell it in less than 30 days guaranteed. So the messaging speaks to the perfect client. And that's the reason why it's such a good ad. And obviously reaches a lot of people, very expensive too. But that's just an example I think maybe some people have seen. So this offer needs to be valuable in the eyes of the target um, that you're reaching out to. It also needs to be something that's typically, you know, that's considered to be free. Um, so you don't want that offer to have a cost associated with it. You want it to be free. And the only cost is for them to hand over their information to you. It's basically say, here's my data, here's my phone number, here's my email, and then I will receive the information. It also needs to be what I call easy squared. So it needs to be easy to understand and it needs to be easy to cash in. So if, you know, you make some offer, you know, you've seen rebates have gone away. Why have rebates gone away? Remember, you know, what, 15 years ago, 20 years ago, there was rebates when you walk through the stores, you would go to Sears or whatever, and almost everything had a rebate. There'd be a yellow tag on, oh, there's a rebate on this for hundred bucks. Why don't they do that anymore? Well, most people weren't filing for the rebates. It was part of the reason why they were doing it. But people started realizing, I don't, I don't even send those things in. It's hard to collect. And it's not easy to cash in. It might be easy to understand the savings, but it's not easy to cash in. So it needs to be easy to understand and it needs to be easy to cash in. Um, one of the great things about marketing these days is that you don't need to spend a lot of money because of social media. And that's what this class was, um, was going to be about and what we can do you know, in a week or two, Voltaire, whatever you want to reschedule is fine. Um, and we'll go into the details of how to, how to use this information. But for the sake of our time constraint right here today, anything that isn't that doesn't have an offer, that doesn't meet these criteria is branding. It's not marketing. Branding does not yield the type of direct results that most people are looking for with their budget or with their time investment in their outreach. So this is why it's important if we're doing outreach, we don't just say, hey, I'm a realtor, let me know if you wanna buy or sell a home. That's, that's branding, even though you may think it's marketing. Hey, I spent money on Facebook, I put it here, but hey, if you wanna sell your home in this area, give me a call. But if there's no offer there, it's not marketing. It's branding. The offer should, and the, and the copy within the offer should create curiosity. So if we use the two most simple ways to do this are how to and top three. If you feel you have expertise, if you feel you have information you wanna to offer to people, you've gotta structure it in that way. You probably notice that if you watch videos on YouTube or you look stuff up or you try to learn things, those are the things you're attracted to. This is what, it's same for everyone. How to do this video on YouTube. That's the one I'm going to look at. Uh, top three things you need to know about this. Okay, that's, that's what I'm looking for. So what's great about real estate is that it's not as vast, although it's, it is somewhat vast, it's not as vast as every single other thing in business because we know certain areas apply to certain people. So whether it's Carmel Valley, Del Mar, Chula Vista, whatever, we know that people who, there's a certain number of people in that area who this message is gonna resonate with. Whether it's how to sell your home or how to, top three things you need to know before you buy a home in Chula Vista. Um, top three things you know before you sell a home in Mission Hills. Um, you know, how to do this, how to sell your home in Mission Hills for top dollar. 
uh, you know, and then you could have a, a subtitle. I always have subtitles. Even in this, you can see I always have a subtitle. Insider's Guide, I explain it a little bit. Um, you know, for my media brand online, it was always Smarter San Diego, making you smarter than everyone else. Having something that gives a little bit more of the tease um, so that you know what's coming. And if that is in line with what the person is looking for. Uh, top three things you need to know before you sell your home in Carmel Valley. How to get top dollar every time. You know, something like that is a great way to, to frame it in such a way that if I'm a potential home seller, if I'm a, in the consideration period, even if I think I maybe already have my agent picked out, even if I, I think I have it all figured out, I'm going to be forced to read that or watch that or digest your content in whatever way you've created it. Just because the messaging is so specific to me that it feels like it's meant for me and I have this draw towards it and I have to look at it. So if you see my videos, which I have over 5,000 videos on YouTube, um, every single one is tailored in such, in such a way that it's specifically talking to a certain person. Do I know if every person who sees it is gonna be that person? No, but that doesn't matter. If you're creating content, if you're creating a message that you're putting out there, you don't create it for everyone who's gonna see it. You create it for the people who you want to respond to it. That is the key. So who are the people that you want to respond to it? Think about those people. What's going on? What's going through their minds? What are they thinking about? People who are thinking about selling their home in Chula Vista today, what is going through their minds? They're worried about COVID, they're worried about this, you know, is the shutdown, blah, blah, blah. Think about those things that there's going through their mind. What is a single mom, you know, who has uh, a home to sell or someone who's been divorced in this area? What is, what's like, put yourself in the situation of someone who's selling their home or someone who's thinking about buying a home. What's going through their mind? What are the things they're thinking about? Those are the things you should be talking about. Those are the things that you should be creating content for. That is what your copy should speak to. Because ultimately, there's gonna be plenty of people who see any message that you create who aren't gonna be interested, who are gonna, it's not gonna to speak to them. It's not gonna be relevant to them. There's gonna be plenty of that that goes on. But that doesn't matter. Those people aren't gonna respond. So who cares? What matters is the people who are gonna respond. What matters is the people who it is relevant to. Those are the people you need to create the copy for. Yeah, so, I like that. I like that just because um, a lot of us just try to throw some very wide net and we care about what everyone's going to think. And I think that was even uh, one of those uh, on the calendar workshop that I just uh, went over said, you can't please everyone. And, you know, why try? You just want to focus in on one person, one type of uh, person that you want to, to pick up and call you. So, um, so when we do this uh, marketing thing, uh, Derek, yeah, we're, we're going to be able to walk away like every agent is going to be walk, walk away with knowing the difference between marketing and branding. And then also with ideas on how to create our own marketing and our own branding for, for our real estate and this, the, the rest of the year. Right. Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, and that's, that's kind of the final point on this little intro that I had set up here. So this is just the intro for the class. So we can understand, okay, the concept of marketing better first if we do that first and then we give you the playbook then it will work much better for you and so that was sort of the setup and the last sort of piece of information here Voltaire, is right on what you're speaking with which is if you do marketing well it is also branding good marketing can also be branding it's face recognition it's brand recognition it's all the things that you get with branding um but it's better because you also have a direct response offer so if you do marketing well you don't need to do branding your marketing is your branding um, right. And that is when I lead into basically what's next and essentially what I call, um, you know, the, the Facebook five and I, I break down a whole bunch of stuff. I'll show you things on the screen and stuff like that. So um, we'll look forward to doing that Voltaire next, uh, next week or the week after whenever we reschedule. Cool. Sounds good. Yeah. Thanks for your time. And, and uh, we'll link up soon and uh, it, we'll send everybody an email letting them know when does anyone have any questions before we end the, uh, the meeting, whether it's about the marketing side or whether it was about the calendar side of things that we went over. Anybody at all? Well, Tara, I don't have a question, but I do have a suggestion. It's uh, calendarpedia.com. I've been using them for a very long time when I was in college for a learning class. It's actually uh, really simple and it gives you the hour outline and I'm very old school. So I like things printed as well. I do have my calendar on my email and also uh, printed calendars is what helps me out. So I know that a lot of us 
are a little older, so that might be a good resource. And it's free. You can donate to the page if you want to contribute. But um, I've been using it for a very long time, and it helps me. And another uh, another good read is when I was with Cal. Go ahead. What was the name of it? The website. Calendarpedia dot uh, com. Calendar PDF. Pedia. Pedia, like Wikipedia. Oh, Pedia dot com. Yeah, and they actually have uh, different calendars um, that you can use, uh, different outlines. And another thing, going back to the the tasks, when I was with Keller Williams, uh, Gary Keller has a book called The One Thing. And he focused on just a one big thing. And that helps me out a lot because I'm a mom. I have a lot of things that I have to do as well. Um, but the one thing helps me to stay focused. And that's like the like eating that frog that you were talking about, just focusing on the, the one thing. Yeah, yeah, that, that definitely uh, having one goal instead of 10, right? Um, cool. Thanks for that. And um, yeah, I'm jumping on Calendarpedia right now. Check it out. Um, anybody else? Uh, questions, comments, suggestions? Cool. All right. Good to see everybody, especially uh, Brian out in Guam. Uh, he's stationed over there right now. He had to get off the boat. There are some complications with COVID on the boat. So uh, we'll, we'll be praying for you, man. And just obviously, I, I'm always wishing you well. So um, thanks Appreciate for jumping it. on. Yeah, of course. Um, awesome. And so we'll see each other soon. Uh, next week, we're going to have uh, one of the top hustlers I've ever met, Leo Gonzalez, come on here and just talk about how he does about 60, 70 deals a year uh, just by by hustling, man. Um, this guy is a guy that I would, uh, we, we shared a, some space together for several years next to each other. Um, and I would come in Saturday, Sunday mornings, and he was just grinding. But you're, you're going to see what he's doing right now in COVID, during COVID, just to be uh, uh, successful still. And he's been doing it for a long time, ranked number two in South County for many years in a row. So um, we'll, we'll, we'll have him on board next week. And, and then we'll schedule Derek, and then we'll update everybody. So uh, appreciate you guys. Take care. Thanks, Walter. Later. Thanks, sir. Yeah, for sure. See ya. Later. Hey guys, take it easy. Peace. Alright, man. Take care, Brian.